Hey everyone, welcome um, to the, today's uh, information session. We're gonna be talking a lot about social experience and kind of residential life um, for this coming fall semester. Um, I'm Sophie Hudson, I'm a rising senior, so class of 2021. Um, and I'm hosting this information session today with five other staff members of the Division of the Student Development at Denison. Um, and before we jump in, I'd love to just have everyone introduce themselves. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Miller, Vice President of Student Development. Eric Farley, Dean of Student Leadership and Community Engagement. Trinity Jetter, Assistant Dean of Diversity and Inclusion. Good afternoon, Carrie Meng, Director of Student Housing Operations and Planning. Hi all, my name is Dana Persley, Director of the Alfred Community Leadership and Involvement Center. Awesome, so a lot of students have submitted um, a lot of questions in advance of today's session. So we'll just kind of jump right into those um, and get started. So Alex, could you provide kind of an overview of what social life um, and social experience kind of for the fall might look like um, just to kind of allow students to understand what they might expect? Yes, uh, thank you, Sophie. And uh, I am excited to uh, be on this call with my colleagues to really uh, just kind of provide an overview of what we hope will be a great experience for our students this year. And so uh, in thinking about designing a vibrant student experience, we believe that, um, first of all, we know that college is some of our best moments and best times. And so we wanna maintain some level of a robust student experience. And as we sought to think about shaping the student experience, we knew that we needed to hear from students uh, and get their input in designing this. And so we did a lot of that work, uh, but we knew that you were interested in figuring out how can you stay safe uh, in a post COVID uh, campus experience, but also uh, bring on the campus life that you really wanna have on your, um, during your time here at Denison. And so for our return, I'm sorry, returning students, uh, campus this looks very different. Uh, if for those of you who will be returning, you will see uh, new signage, new things that will kind of mark that we are in a COVID moment, but different can be memorable. And so I do want to highlight that. We are thinking also about ways that we can put resources into the hands of students to support their ideas around um, collaboration, innovation, and really provide resources to students in this moment. And so we are uh, going to roll out uh, opportunities for funding uh, that students can collaborate and do innovative things here on campus this uh, year. We know that um, the outdoors will have to be a venue for a lot of these memorable moments. And so we want to emphasize that. Uh, and so we've asked you all in our past communication to help us think through uh, things that you'd wanna see on campus outdoors uh, or events or programs that you want us to do that you would send those to the Division of Student Development. I must say this, and I hope that you can hear me and I will say it three times. We need your help. We need your help. We need your help uh, because our ability to sustain this vibrant campus experience will rely on your partnership. And when I think about getting your help and receiving your help, I think there are three things that we want you to think about. How do you take care of yourself is important. And we want you to think about how are you doing that now and how you will sustain that on campus. Two, how do you take care of others? And that we are this community, we're all in it together. And it's less about me, but more about we. Uh, and then three, how do we care for our community? And so we want you to think about those things before you return and how we can help you in supporting our community. I must say that we are excited to welcome back our sophomores because we know that you had uh, quite a bumpy first year. So we were excited to welcome you back. And we also are excited to welcome our juniors and seniors back uh, as well. But we are also excited to uh, welcome some of our newest members to our community, and that's our first year students. And so CLIC and other, the first year office is thinking of ways to make our August orientation a memorable experience for you all as well. So I'll stop there, Sophie. All right, awesome. Um, so kind of the next question that we just, I would love to know is kind of like, what was students, um, what might be we be able to expect kind of um, in the first 14 days of the semester compared to the rest of the semester moving forward? Uh, yes, and so I wanna say that um, our overall guiding principles will always be that we need to maintain a healthy and safe campus. Uh, and so that will always guide our decisions that will always guide how we will do our work here uh, on campus. But you should all receive by now pre-arrival information 
uh, that has gone out to all students. And we know that some of you have not completed that and we invite you to do so in the remaining days left uh, because that's important in understanding the overall community viral health of our community. And so read through all the messages we've sent you in the last week or so and acquaint yourself with the pre-arrival information. So that's the first thing. Secondly, the first 14 days were communicated to you all in multiple uh, sets of communication in the last couple of weeks. And so some of those things on a high level, I wanna raise up for today's conversation. It's important that our campus stay closed as possible. And so we would like students to stay on the hill for the first 14 days. Uh, and this will hopefully change pending um, public uh, health guidance, but for now we are focusing on those 14 days students staying on campus. And so you might think, well, how can I socialize in a community that's closed? Well, we ask that you use common areas and not your rooms for that. Uh, some of our residence halls have great um, common area spaces. There are many different quads that folks can socialize on and we invite you to do that. And upon return, we invite you, and we spoke about this in our social life email that had gone out a few days ago, how you can create these small family-like communities or what we like to call quarantines. But these are kind of the small groups of people that you can connect with within the first 14 days that you can trust your well-being with, that you, hopefully you all as a community can rally around following guidelines, following healthy behaviors, and creating the experience that you want to have more intimately within those first 14 days. Awesome. Um, so we know that over the past like six months, the guidelines, um, state guidelines have really continued to change kind of to meet the changing needs of COVID. Um, so do you expect that these current guidelines that are established right now will also continue to change throughout the semester? Uh, absolutely. Uh, to your point, you know, the understanding of COVID and the impact of our campus operation has certainly changed from March until now. And we suspect that it will continue to do so. And so many of the guidelines you've seen, read, or heard are based on what we know right now. We cannot guarantee you that within 14 days, we will be able to click on a switch and campus will return to its regular state. I doubt that and I think it's unlikely. But what we will do is communicate early and often our guidelines, our expectations, and also the parameters that we would allow students to socialize. And so we will continue to review local, state, and CDC guidelines. Um, so also we've seen kind of a lot of different travel guidelines come out um, in the past few emails. So just to kind of dive into some specific questions and just to review over that, um, can students travel off campus? Can visitors come to campus? And for example, could I go see one of my friends in October? Well, certainly we, as I just uh, shared, want to maintain a closed, as much of a closed system as possible. And so that would include travel and visitors. And so we have laid out in our travel guidelines uh, what we would hope students would live up to. And that is uh, to limit your travel uh, to the extent that you can, as much as you can, to be sure uh, that you are maintaining this closed system. And so if students need to travel for essential purposes, we ask that you communicate that with your residential community members who can help facilitate ways in which we can understand what the travel's for and maintain our community health. But we would like students to stay on campus as much as possible and limit guests as much as possible. Awesome. Um, so we've also received a lot of questions about housing and kind of residential experience and what that might look like going into the fall. So Carrie, um, I know that move-in was probably gonna look a lot different than the traditional move-in experience that everyone has been used to in the past couple of years. Um, could you kind of explain a little bit about what that might look like and what we could all expect? Yeah, uh, returning students will certainly notice some big changes this year. And the first is that we've asked you to schedule a move-in time slot. Uh, that is very different from past years. So students are scheduling move-in time slots in their My Housing portal. And we need you all to do that by noon this Friday, noon Eastern time. Uh, if students haven't scheduled a move-in time slot, then we'll expect to see them on August 16th after the noon hour. Uh, and we're doing this so that we can give everybody lots and lots of room and time to move in. Um, and so it's going to be just a different experience. Uh, we would like you to pack lightly. Um, there are some limitations on how many helpers you can have, two helpers this fall. And so to make things move pretty speedy, we ask that you pack lightly. Um, you'll want to have your cell phone charged when you get to campus because you will need to show your wellness badge as well as your My Housing portal, which will have a QR code. We'll scan that and get you all checked into campus. 
we're trying to do as much in a touchless way as we can. So having a charged phone will be really, really important. Um, and then you'll be coming into campus through only one entrance. So you'll come in by Mitchell Center over by the athletic facility and you'll enter the traffic flow that way. Um, and you'll get to see tons and tons of us as you're moving in. We're really excited to welcome you back. So you'll see residential communities and the wellness center and the first year office and all kinds of helpers um, around just to help people get checked in. And then the normal August warning that inevitably these will be our hottest days because that's just how it happens. So you'll wanna dress really comfortably and um, be prepared to be a little warmer than usual. It's always so warm during It's always so hot. <laughs> um, so if students kind of arrive earlier um, in Granville and they get there maybe before their time slot, um, can they come onto campus or should they wait? Yeah, we want to extend the same courtesy to all families and give everybody a good amount of time to move in. So if you're early, it's a good opportunity to maybe visit Village Coffee or River Road, grab a sandwich, do something that you haven't gotten to do since March, and then enter the traffic flow when it's your time. Uh, you'll know it's your time because your My Housing portal will, will turn green and it'll say it's time to check in and you'll have that QR code available to you. So um, just to honor the time that everyone is scheduled, we'd love you to just come when it's your turn. Awesome. Um, so this is kind of a specific question, but knowing that regularly washing the um, cloth face masks is really important to healthy practices on campus. Um, is it true that all the washers and dryers within the different residence halls have been replaced this year? Yeah, I'm so excited about this, which sounds goofy to be excited about laundry, but I am excited about it. So all of the washers and dryers on campus this year are brand new and your laundry fees are now included with your room costs, which means you will just walk up to the machine and put your stuff in and press start. Please add soap. Um, and so, yes, you'll be able to launder things as often as you need this year. Um, and you'll get some good training materials in the laundry rooms to show you how to operate the new machines, but it's just like you're used to. I have to say that's super exciting. <laughs> um, so, and there's also been kind of a lot of questions about the residence halls in general. Um, so knowing that we've talked about sort of like visitor policies, can a student sibling maybe from like another school come and visit um, during the year and spend the night in that student's room? Yeah, we have had lots of questions about this. So family members can visit campus and you're welcome to do that, but we have said no overnight guests are permitted. And because of COVID-19, um, like Alex said before, things will change throughout the semester and we'll communicate as often and as early as we can, but there might be additional restrictions or different stipulations about guests in the residence halls and in individual rooms. So. Um, students will be expected to abide by those things as they come forward and we'll communicate them very well, but we need people to pay attention to email this year big time. Um, so kind of building off that question also, can you have a friend from maybe another residence hall visit and be in your room? Yeah, so that's that 14 day difference there at the beginning of the semester. So guests are not allowed in the residence hall rooms during the first 14 days. It's gonna be you and your roommates. Um, and after that, you can have guests from within the university community, and then you'll just want to refer to the housing policy and the student resident agreement for those details. And so you should have those in your inbox, but also you can look on the reopen site. Um, and then again, if things change, we'll of course let you know. Great. Um, so also understanding that Denison kind of um, has set aside specific housing for quarantine and isolation, should that arrive for any student? Um, and say, so for example, say if I've come into contact with someone who's tested positive for COVID and then most likely have to relocate to one of those kind of designated quarantine housing spots, um, what should I kind of pack and have ready to go with me? Um, and how should I kind of prepare should that situation arise? Should I bring extra sheets or is there anything specific um, to prepare for that? Yeah, for sure. So we do have quarantine and isolation housing arranged for the just in case situation that we would need to use it. Um, and if you search the reopen site that Denison has going for go bag, you will see the complete packing list available there. But in general, you'll want some comfy clothes, underwear, pajamas, the normal things that you would want if you weren't feeling well or if you were going to stay with a friend for a couple of days. Um, and it'll be good to have some lists available to you as well, like a list of your insurance provider and those numbers, um, a list of your allergies, medications, and then the things you need to study remotely as well. 
Um, we, of course, if we're working to relocate anyone, we will work with you to make sure you have what you need, but you can always be prepared in advance. It's always good to be prepared by having these things set aside. You will want an extra set of sheets available to you. Um, and just most importantly, the things you need to study and to stay on track. Awesome. Um, so also kind of, I'm a rising senior living in an apartment this year, which I'm super excited about. Silverstein. Um, yeah. But um, can you kind of tell me a little bit about the recommendations that you might have for grocery, grocery delivery or kind of food delivery um, and what that might look like? Yep. So that will work the way it has in past years. If you've used Instacart on campus or if you've had uh, food or meals delivered in the past, that will work just the same way where you work with the company to say, meet me at this location for a drop off, etc. If you're having like a meal delivery kit um, mailed to you, you'll pick that up at your Slater box and you'll just want to be mindful about perishable items. Um, for seniors, we will provide a list of grocery stores that deliver. A lot of them deliver locally and many of them do curbside as well once we're um, at a place where we can leave campus to grab those things. Great. Um, so also kind of looking as we approach going back to Denison um, this fall, for students who kind of stored things at school, um, how will they be reunited with their items? Yeah, this is the hot question of the summer. Uh, we are super pleased to tell students that as long as we knew who the items belong to, they will be in your fall room when you get here. So items are being delivered right now. I've seen the trucks running around campus all week. Um, if a room was just kind of left and we couldn't sort out who belonged to what, then those items will be at the physical plant and we can work with you to arrange pickup of those items. Um, students who applied for storage and did the application and went through that whole process received an email about this um, last week, I believe. And you can find that information on the reopen site as well. If you left some items here, but you didn't get the email, just search storage on the reopen site and it'll give you some information about what to expect. Great. Um, also looking, so thinking about residence halls, um, could you talk a little bit about the community bathrooms? So for example, if I'm living in Crawford, um, would there be kind of different expectations for bathroom usage surrounding cleaning? Um, and then also kind of, will those bathrooms be cleaned more frequently throughout the year? Yeah. So the whole vibe this fall is take care of each other, right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, and in line with that, based on CDC recommendations, building services will continue to clean and disinfect all bathrooms daily. Uh, students will also be provided with cleaning supplies. And so the best practice or the rule of thumb is to uh, disinfect the space before you use it and then disinfect after. If you do that, then we can feel pretty good about how clean things will be. Um, we'll continue to do the routine cleaning in common areas as well, like disinfecting countertops. Um, and we'll do that with some, some good frequency, but with special attention on high touch areas like doorknobs, light switches, et cetera. Awesome. Um, so Eric, also kind of thinking about gathering spaces, um, what about common rooms in residence halls and sort of will those be open for student use? Um, and what are the expectations as students go into maybe those spaces? Yeah, thanks, Sophie. So yes, students will be allowed to use those common rooms and residence halls, um, but we're also reminding students that they have to utilize really healthy behaviors in order to protect themselves and members of our community. And so this would be things like physical distancing, wearing a face mask or a covering, hand washing often, uh, cleaning and disinfecting, as well as making certain that you're checking your symptoms each and every day. Awesome. Um, and then also kind of when my roommates and I are in our room, maybe all together, um, do we need to wear our masks? So no, uh, we're considering your roommates to be your pod, your bubble, the people you trust and you're close to. And so you, you won't be required to wear your face mask or coverings during that time you're in your room or your apartment. Great, thanks. Um, so we've also, I know that I've had a lot of questions. I know a lot of students have a lot of questions about student organizations and student social life um, coming back to fall or coming back to campus in the fall. So. Dana, these next couple questions are for you. Um, but Alex mentioned sort of in the first 14 days being a time when we're really working to protect the health and safety of the community members and being extra careful during those first 14 days. Um, what might be some of kind of the events or activities that we could look forward to during the first 14 days? Absolutely. Thanks, um, Sophie. So we've been really focused on knowing that 
our campus organizations aren't going to be able to have the same type of events that open up the school year like we're used to. So given that, CLIC is carefully planning a number of events and programs and experiences um, in conjunction with Algo, primarily for our first year students on those first couple of days of move in, but also for the wider Denison community. Um, so for us in CLIC, it's all about being creative and thinking outside the box and take, you know, embracing social distancing and thinking how we can host events and experiences that will help students build connection and find that community and that sense of belonging that we're hoping them to experience in those first couple of weeks. Um, so to kind of share a couple of the events that we have going on, starting on that Thursday of move-in, we'll be hosting Mitchell Night, which you'll see as you're moving in, as Carrie mentioned. Um, Mitchell Night will be an opportunity for you to try a number of different games, inflatables, giant guess who, ride a mechanical bull, some axe throwing, bingo, crafts, prizes, all kinds of fun activities, food, music, you name it. So um, you might be asking how we're going to do this in a socially distant way. Well, we'll be set up. We've been planful to ensure your safety and well-being during these events. On Friday, we'll continue with the first year tradition of Sizzle, which will feature outdoor events, including glow in the dark putt-putt, glow games, food, and we'll even be hosting a socially distant silent disco. On Saturday evening, we encourage our students to join us in virtual trivia night. There'll be a few watch party locations on campus, but you know, grab your roommate, grab your friends that you're living with, and engage in the Denison trivia that we'll be hosting, and there will be prizes available as well. On Sunday night, we're encouraging folks to get outside again, and we'll be providing blankets and space for folks to watch one of our three outdoor movies on different academic uh, quads and spaces around campus. Those movies will include Parasite, The High Note, and Jumanji, The Next Level. So talk with your friends, grab your mask, grab a blanket, and hang out and watch our movies. Finally, we'll be hosting our annual community cookout during dinner on the first day of classes on Monday, the August 17th. So stop at one of the dining halls, grab some food, and we'll have some fun and games and activities going on outside. So that's just to highlight some of our week of wel welcome or wow events that our office has been working on. Um, in addition to wow, we will be hosting a virtual involvement fair during the week of August 24th, the second full week of classes, because we want all of our students, both our new students and our upperclassmen students who are returning to make sure they know all about our 160 plus campus organizations and ways they can get involved. So that includes our art and academic organizations, our cultural organizations, fraternity and sorority life, club sports and intramurals, advocacy and social justice organizations, our service opportunities, as well as our religiously affiliated groups. So in addition to all these events that are being hosted during the first 14 days by campus departments and office, we want you to think about what you might be capable of do. So focusing on those small gatherings, continue to social distance, wear your mask, take advantage of the nice warm Ohio weather. Um, so for more information about all the CLIC and upcoming programs we have going on, I encourage you to check out Dennis and CLIC on Instagram as well. Super fun. Um, I would love to go to the axe throwing and mechanical bowl. Both sound super fun. Um, so kind of beyond those first 14 days, though, um, can organizations still plan in-person events? Um, and if so, what are the guidelines surrounding that? Yeah. So beyond those first 14 days, you know, contingent on our community health, as Alex had mentioned at the beginning, we're really hoping that we can start working with our campus organizations and our students to mindfully and strategically plan those in-person events. We're still going to encourage students to meet and engage virtually and through socially distant ways and using outdoor spaces. Um, you know, think about your campus organizations and the size and the meeting and the spaces that you normally take. It's going to have to look a little different. Uh, because of social distancing and COVID, but I think we can be creative and think of ways that we can still engage our community. So if you're interested in planning an in-person event or program, CLIC is here to help. We can brainstorm, support, think through ideas, um, but then when planning an in-person event, we're really going to have to think about logistics and reimagine them as a result of COVID, including available locations and spaces on campus, social distancing, and what food service might look like. Uh, campus organization leaders have been engaging in CLIC town halls during this past week, and they've been provided more information and support to begin this semester. So I'm hoping these town halls, as well as the information they're receiving, will really help us start off the semester strong. Great. Um, so knowing that some students really like to get off campus, um, and we've already kind of talked about that, but will there be shuttles to Easton or kind of trips off campus like they mm -hmm. have been in yep. the past? Yep. 
as Alex mentioned at the beginning, those first 14 days are crucial. And we're asking folks to stay on the Hill. So we are considering and looking at possibilities of offering university sponsored travel off campus beyond those first 14 days, but it'll really continue to depend on our community health. Um, so check back in and we'll share information as we get updates. Awesome. So I know that you kind of talked about if people have ideas for different events on campus. So what can I do if I have maybe an event for a super fun um, campus event that I think would be awesome? Yeah, we're here to listen, support, and make it happen. So if you have an innovative idea for a campus event, a program, please contact Click or you can contact me directly. And we're really encouraging students to think about how they might be able to collaborate on programs and events that support Denison's mission for creating a community um, while also creating a vibrant social life experience for our students. And there is some funding available through Click and through um, Alex's work with as vice president that will be available for such collaborative, socially distant programs and events. Cool. Um, so in my Red Core research um, and in the conversations I've had with different students through it, um, there's been a lot of different kind of concern and um, questions surrounding what might happen if students don't wear a mask or if they don't socially distance um, or if they throw parties kind of in really congested areas. So what is Denison kind of doing to or what will they do to address this? Yeah, this is a great question, Sophie. So thank you for asking. Um, students should recall receiving uh, via email the community care agreement. I'm happy to report that we have over 1,700 students who have already signed it, and it is an expectation that all students sign it and carefully read it and refer back to it throughout the academic year. Um, so we really need students to hold each other accountable. And so if you notice something that is a violation of the agreement, we're really empowering students to have a respectful conversation with each other. Um, point out what the issue is, and then even role model ways they can uh, quickly rectify it so we can move forward. Um, in addition to that, there will be a community care agreement council, uh, which is a council made up of trained general faculty members as well as students who are going to respond in a timely way to violations of this agreement. Um, but let's keep in mind that we're an educational institution first. And so we will first seek to educate students on healthy behaviors, like I mentioned earlier, and make certain that we're protecting the campus community and we're creating a space for reflection. Um, I, I do wanna mention that this doesn't mean that we're gonna take violations lightly at all. Um, in the information that we sent to you this summer um, in the code of conduct, um, students are expected at all times to comply with university directives and guidance and to check their emails on a regular basis. And so failure to adhere to these community health and safety guidelines uh, will be the basis for us taking disciplinary action on students, uh, which could be uh, that up until leading to separation from the university. And so it's mindful that you know, students kind of keep their eye on that and, and ask questions for clarity as needed. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this council or even serving, um, I wanna ask you to contact Dean Fox um, in the student development suite, or even Erica Jefferson, who works in the Office of Campus Values and Conflict Resolution. Um, so just before we dive into the next section, I just wanna mention that we will be opening up the Q&A shortly. Um, so if, you, if anyone's listening has any questions, um, please type them in the YouTube chat and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thanks. Um, so the next section we're gonna dive into is topic of like diversity and inclusion. Um, so Trinity, as we think about diversity inclusion on campus, what are some initiatives that, um, that you're planning for campus in the fall? Thank you, Sophie. So as you all know, we have experienced multiple social incidents which have magnified our conversations around anti-racism, inclusion, and just all over allyship. So diversity and inclusion is hosting several platforms grounded in three specific areas for the campus community. Um, number one, we are on a strong trajectory to further ignite a heightened level of community building engagements. So community building engagements that are rooted in a collective tone of us as a community um, expanding our equity and inclusion competencies, those community building engagements will be hosted in student spaces such as leadership retreats, orientation training, campus organizations, where competencies are being developed through sessions such as bias and intercultural inventory. Uh, we'll also go a, 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 a little bit deeper into the power of storytelling and narratives to share who you are as an individual and how your identity 
contributes to the overall community. Um, from there, we'll create action plans moving forward. And just to name a few of our additional forthcoming experiences that you'll hear um, more about. Um, we have the, the, listing, the listing tours with several student organizations, as I just mentioned, um, and then some things with athletics as well. So th that information will be forthcoming. Um, and we welcome any organization who would like diversity and inclusion to host a space with you all to definitely reach out and we can have more community building spaces um, per your discretion. Uh, secondly, diversity and inclusion will have more capacity building experiences, starting off with listening spaces. So Alex and I will be joining several campus organizations to listen and learn more about your experiences to ensure that our plans moving forward are definitely in lockstep with our current student experiences. Um, communal dialogues is also a great venue where we'll be able to process exchange, press and challenge one another to consider life, um, our interconnected lens to basically bridge our personal stories and learn from the views of others, which is different from agreeing, right? Learning is different from agreeing, but these community spaces will give us an opportunity to learn from one another as diverse individuals. And then you'll also see more peer to peer listening spaces through these communal dialogues. For example, the Office of Religious and Spiritual Life, they have held interfaith dialogue spaces. And so you'll find more about those spaces being held in our residence halls, in the open house, in uh, 402 Slater, but also virtually to ensure our remote students can join those spaces as well. And our students will be invited to host some of those communal dialogue spaces. And then third, we'll have more intercultural and intracultural exploration. So diversity and inclusion is an essential focal point to maintain healthy, thriving communities. And every one of us adds to our unique fabric of Denison. So with this component, our goal is to create spaces where you can share who you are, but also stretch and learn more about others. For example, MCSA in collaboration with the theater department we will host a couple outdoor play readings. And there we're going to expand on the frequency and topics of listening spaces, but also bridge and discover how our differences in conversations such as freedom of speech, um, anti-racism and other interconnected bias conversations, how they all influence who we are, exploring our similarities, but also disagreements in an interactive, socially distant space. So these elements, they all make up our sense of self, our personal values, they shape our lens and how the world impacts us, how we impact the world. But it will also give us a platform to talk about how we collectively impact our time on the Hill together. So all three of those components of diversity and inclusion initiatives, community building, capacity building, and the intercultural exploration, those all support us to be even more so, or excuse me, you all to be even more so well-rounded thought leaders and influencers, but feel even more um, comfortable engaging in conversations around equity and inclusion. So Denison as a whole, we definitely will elevate our interactive spaces, our conversations, our learning spaces to just learn more about one another and how we can further shape our time on the Hill as well as our communities beyond Denison. Amazing. Um, so next we're gonna kind of look into social spaces. So I know that a lot of students have um, questions about this and kind of what they're, what it's gonna look like as we return to Denison in the fall. Um, so Eric, what are some kind of additional spaces that we might see this year um, and then how also is the student voice included in forming these um, and within these plans? I have to say that this was the highlight of my summer is just sitting with students, especially the Red Course students, talking about what their experiences have been and what their ideas are for making students feel more comfortable on our campus. And so additional anaerobic chairs have been ordered. You'll notice colorful chairs located around the campus, um, especially within the residential quads. I think we have teal and we have red and we have brown, just to allow students to feel comfortable to set out, to read, do whatever they need to do. 
Um, I also recently learned that we've ordered some additional chairs for the academic quad so that as you're moving from class to class or even in between meetings, you have a moment to sort of pause and relax and enjoy the sun. Um, I would also like to share that we are excited to announce um, that we have large um, painted circles that are going to be spaced six feet apart on two green areas that will allow for students to do some reading and some homework and some socially distanced discussions with their peers. These are going to be located um, in an area that's directly located behind Kappa Sigma near the enclosed tennis courts. And then we have a second location that's in the process of being confirmed. And so um, for those who are from New York City, you may have seen these circles already there. And so this seems like a great uh, thing to borrow from them uh, and bring to our campus community to allow students to be outside while the weather is still really nice. Um, with all of these additions, um, ideas were first shared with student leaders and then um, brought to the Red Course students, as well as campus partners to solicit feedback on feasibility. And so we're trying to be mindful of that. Um, and just to make note of something that was mentioned earlier, a link was sent to students earlier this week by the Division of Student Development to solicit additional ideas of things to do with the outdoor spaces. And so we're thankful for that. Um, and we will be meeting soon to talk about what else can be added for students to enjoy. Um, some other ideas. Um, there's going to be a large tent behind Slater Union. Um, and this is going to be um, put up very soon on the Reshackle for Commons. And it's going to be used primarily as overflow space as we need to really de-densify the entry level of Slater Union. Um, and so students and faculty and staff are going to be encouraged to um, sort of gather informally um, during the academic and business days. Um, now, some programming will happen under that tent in the evenings, and those will be sponsored by Click and other campus partners for students to enjoy. Um, just a quick note about campfires and bonfires. There were a lot of questions about that uh, throughout the summer as students are, I think, enjoying themselves, um, visiting with family members and camping in the woods. Um, and so during those first 14 days, we will not be allowing um, any campfires or bonfires to take place. But uh, post 14 days, and this is really contingent upon uh, the community viral health status, as well as our local and, and CDC guidelines, whether or not we can move forward with allowing the campfires and bonfires to take place. But if everything's OK, we can move forward and allow those things to happen. And so with campfires, uh, we're going to ask that students, once they have a sense of what they would like to do, uh, to contact campus safety for approval and access to materials. Um, and so that we can get those things in order for them. Uh, we're not allowing this to happen on the residential quads, uh, in part because we just want to be safe and make certain that we're not um, creating fires near um, the residence halls where people actually live and their things are being stored. Um, as well as bonfires, um, there's one location for that to take place, and that's Ebal Pond. Um, and we want to make certain that as students are making plans for that, that they contact Dennis's Office of Risk Management and Environmental Health in advance, because there's a lot of sort of levers that they need to be pulled uh, in order to make certain that we're communicating clearly with the Granville community, as well as folks on campus to make certain that this is as uh, organized as safely as possible. Awesome. So um, what should we kind of be able to expect around party registration, looking towards those kind of spaces? Um, Will it function the same or look different? So there's going to be some tweaks to that. Um, spaces used for large social events and parties um, may not be available in the same way that they were in years past. Um, some spaces may have been taken offline and transformed into classroom spaces that we can use for this academic year. Uh, so please pl check the uh, party registration page for a list of spaces and their new COVID-19 capacities to make certain that we're adhering to social distancing, um, as well as allowing for folks to be safe um, as they're enjoying themselves. Uh, the trained hosts for these social events will be also required to provide a guest list at the conclusion of their party. And so uh, in the case of an outbreak, which we're hoping never happens, uh, this information will be used in order to track um, students and um, figure out who might have um, had the virus. And so uh, that information will be solicited and there will be a time frame where we're gonna be expecting to get it back. Um, awesome. So looking forward, I know that a lot of people have been working out during this time. Um, so looking forward to the semester. Uh, will that the Crown Fitness Center still be open? Absolutely. Students can use Mitchell. Um, as in all spaces on our campus, masks will still be required even when exercising. So they can look forward to working out as usual. Great. Um, so kind of some questions now from the chat that people submitted. Um, Amelia asked, if I'm studying outside or alone, 
or studying outside alone or with my roommate, is it okay to take my mask off? Um, don't want to get reported, but would love to have a break from wearing the mask when we can safely have one. Yeah. I would say if you can ensure that you're being socially distant from another individual, that that would be okay. We just need students to be very mindful and to always have their mask on them. Um, another question was, with regards to the limit to two move-in helpers, can a third helper wait in the car and switch out with a parent at some point? Um, and this is our first year sister would really like to help her brothers move in. Mm, yeah, we, we understand. And that's going to be one of the tougher things about move in this year. The goal is to limit the total number of people who visit campus during the days of move in. Um, so the best we the best answer I have is to limit it to two, truly two people. Um, and we know that that will be really, really tough. We hope technology will be on your side and hopefully lots of FaceTiming and uh, showing people around as your helpers are helping you move in. So the answer is two helpers. The next one is from Brenna and it's will sororities and fraternities have access to their houses um, or the spaces where they meet. Yeah. So not Great. Oh, go for it, Eric. Go ahead, Dana. <laughs> <It's your area. laughs> um, so what, what I'll share is that our fraternities and sororities will that live in those spaces will have access. After that first 14 days, students will be able to use those spaces for informal gatherings with less than 10. But anytime our fraternities or sororities want to use those spaces for larger gatherings, they will have to register those events and connect with CLIC to ensure that they're engaging in proper social distancing. So we want to be mindful that we know students utilize these spaces for a number of different purposes purposes and reasons, and we want to honor that, but we also recognize that we want to keep our community safe. So continuing to engage virtually or using outdoor space, knowing that our fraternities and sororities are very large communities, um, but that that lounge space will be accessible to them after those first 14 days. Awesome. Um, well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to be here today and to answer all these student questions um, about the fall. We know that everything's up in the air. So it does really help to have as much information as possible, even if things will change as we go. Um, but I think a lot of the answers from the questions they were on my mind too. So helped a lot. So thank you so much and have a great day.